Hey guys! Hey guys! I'm Lou. I'm Liv. And this is our camper van, Olive, the third part of our travel team. we left on a trip to travel the world for three years. As we all know, COVID hit and we had to come home. During that time, we had some brainwaves about what we could do to get on the road again. And this was our answer. Building a camper van meant that we would have freedom to travel around anywhere we could take our camper van without as many restrictions. We bought this van in February 2021. And in total, it took seven months for us to build. We spent in total, three and a half months part-time, most probably three to three and a half months full-time, and we are super happy with the results. You can watch the full conversion of our van over on TikTok right now, and we'll be posting to Shorts very soon, so stay tuned for that. Plus, we will do a full cost breakdown of everything we spent on this van at the end of this video. Now let's get into the tour. We bought a 14 plate, long wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter with the high roof, not the extra high roof. When we bought the van, it had 69,000 miles and we paid 11,000 pounds for it, which at the time was an absolute bargain. The reason we chose the Sprinter is A, they tend to have a longer lifespan than other vehicles. You see a lot of Sprinters that have already done 350,000 miles and are still going. The size of it is really important to us. Mercedes have a really reliable track record and we love the curvature that comes with this van shape. So we have tried to maintain the curvature using this tongue and groove on all of the walls and ceiling in the camper van. And we think it adds a really nice dimension to the van, particularly when everything's closed up, adds a little bit of extra je ne sais quoi. So the inspiration behind all the design within the interior of this van was lots of boho chic, lots of rattan, lots of gold. Still definitely something that I love even today. So now I'm gonna get in and show you the kitchen. So as you walk into the entrance of our van, the first thing that we have here is a little box which keeps kind of cleaning products, some shoes if we want them. We ended up keeping our slippers in here quite a lot when we were on the road. And then we have these gold handles here which hold some empty bags so we can store our tea towels and any kind of other amenities we need on a day-to-day -day basis. That brings us into our kitchen. We decided to go for quite a large kitchen in our van, an L shape. We love to cook and having lots of space here was really important to us. So the worktop of our van, we really originally wanted it to be like a wood effect. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get one of those with the weight that we were working with. Um, so we ended up going for this marble, which is from Ikea, but actually looks really, really great and is super light. So we lucked out there. That brings us on to our sink. We decided to go for quite a large sink in this area. And again, with our color scheme, we did go for gold, quite bougie, but we're really pleased with it and also a statement tap in the gold as well we have a full hob from Thetford we only have two hobs but we find that's pretty all we really need with it being two of us we also have an oven which is pretty not always usual in a van again this is from Thetford as well and we find we actually do use it quite regularly means we can also have toast in the morning which I love to have so that's that's really great. We also have this super cute grill here, also in gold, which was just icing on top of all the cakes. And our splashback here are real tiles. So it was really important for us that we had something here that wouldn't melt, because we do have a live flame here. So we couldn't have had um, anything fake here or anything like that. So yeah, these are real tiles. Um, and we have a gold trim to these as well, of course. We also did a splashback on this side, purely because if we were sitting here or in the bedroom area, we just wanted something 
to finish off the kitchen area and also make sure that we didn't have any splashes onto anything when we were cooking. This area in the van, which is obviously a blind as you can see right now, but it is also a hole that leads us through to the cabin. Now, sometimes some people might think, why, why did we keep this hole if we were to cover up everything else? Well, it's more for safety. So if there's anything going on outside or if we feel like we're in an unsafe situation, we can simply jump through here and we can drive off. Because of our locking system, if we locked the keys in the van and the doors locked automatically, it means that we could get in via the cabin and we wouldn't be locked out. This area also becomes our dressing room area. So we have a mirror on the wall here. Super important for us to have a decent sized mirror in the van. This was actually one of the only ones we could find to fit in this area. And it, we have got it stuck to our wall so it's not banging against the van as we drive. We have a small hanging basket here, which we keep things that we need every day. We've got our water here, we've got posters here should we need them and it usually ends up holding other little bits and bobs which you don't even think about until you live in a van. That brings me on to our hanging units which we're really proud of. We have, we did rattan across these ourselves and we have our gold handles here as well. They open upwards like so. So we built these ourselves and they have like special self-closing hinges on here so it holds it up and also gives a little bit of resistance when you push it down as well. So this usually houses our underwear and any more essentials that we might need when we're on the road. Obviously there's nothing in here now because we're not actually traveling in the van. And then our second one holds our food. As you can see, some of that is still in here. So any sort of food that we're taking, cereal, stuff like that, all lives in here. So this brings us on to a huge feature in our van, which is our fridge. So it is a 12 volt fridge and it is the brand is Technics and we bought it from Inlander. Might not look like a 12 volt fridge, but it is, I assure you. And we obviously took inspiration from the Smeg fridges. It is very large, but that was important for us to ensure that we could hold all of our food. We've got different sections in here, for obviously our milk, sauces, condiments, vegetables in here more bits in here any bottles of wine or beer we might have and it also has a freezer up the top here so that's quite a large area that we can store stuff in as well you will notice we've also got a lock on here which we just got from amazon this is to ensure that our door doesn't open and close when we're driving so it just clips on like this or you open it as so now i'm going to get on to talk about our cupboards so the kitchen itself was built by us and our doors here and here were bought off a shelf from Ikea, but all the rest of the doors were made by us as well. So this one here is a pop-off door, like so. And in here we store our thermal blinds, which again, we made ourselves. Very important when keeping yourself warm in a van at night. We also have continued our gold theme through our handles here and they have a marble bit in the middle which goes with our work top, very important. So our cupboard under the sink holds any cleaning products, it's a quite a large space, it goes all the way around the corner there, so we've got a lot of storage space here. We usually keep our towels here, any stuff we need for the kitchen cleaning products etc all lives under here also really good to note we have these butterfly kind of clips here that keep all of our doors secure when we are driving and you just push them in like this our next cupboard holds all of our cutlery which i'll show you which comes out like so we have another small drawer here which just holds our scissors and any kind of essential items in there we have our plates, our cups, our glasses, and some wine glasses at the back there. These all stay very secure by having these rubber matting between them, which means they don't slide around. Also have at the back here, which aren't hanging up right now because we're not living in the van, but 
all of these kitchen utensils hang up here above the stove. A really cool feature which everyone seems to love is our condiments drawer, very clever. And then under here we have our colander, some Tupperware, just bits and bobs. Final cupboard lives under here is where we keep all of our pots and pans, everything that we need to cook and also our chopping board and an oven tray as well. The last things in the kitchen are our towel holder or kitchen roll holder here and then our salt soap holders here and here which also stay very secure when we are driving. So our tap only has cold water so if we want hot water in here we just boil this kettle. The water supply is underneath the van so we have a 120 litre fresh water tank which is at the back of the van which I'll show you in a minute and then directly below this sink underneath the van we have a 25 litre grey water tank. So you're only emptying it twice a week and it's got a little tap on it so it's really easy to empty. Just a few things to add about the oven. So the oven runs solely on gas, obviously it's wired up so that there's an ignition. Something that's really important about all of the gas points on our van is that directly below this there is a, a tube that runs out the bottom of the van. So if there was any gas to be um, leaking anywhere, any gas will stays low because it's LPG and filters out of the bottom. We have this cool little mechanism that we built. There's this tin foiled piece of ply basically and that stops any heat rising from the oven when it's on from ruining any of the electrical wires that are connected to the to the hob on the top. And then we built this frame with the ventilation built in to let any heat out and then this whole thing just pops back together. There we are. So that's a little bit of safety um, just about the oven and a bit of info about how our water supply works. So we have two main seating areas in the van. Liv is very proud that she built the seat cushions herself. So these are just pieces of ply on the bottom, a piece of foam and then it's nice cord material. Underneath each of the seats we have more storage. So in this one we tend to put all of our smelly shoes and then this one we have our toilet as you can see from this cool little door that we built so this swings open which gives you a little bit of privacy We've got a toilet roll holder and we have a porta potty from Fetford which runs on chemicals um, so there's no smelling uh, and you just dispose of the chemical waste at any of the campsites that we go to and that just pops open and you sit there and the doors stopping from people being able to see your bum. Slides back in. No number twos in the van though, only number ones allowed. You can see outside from this one, so this is my favourite seat. And this one is a little bit more boring. But this is where we usually put our camera bag and this is where we've got some of our electrical system. So this one here turns on our inverter, so that allows us to run off 230 volt on some of our appliances in the van when we're not hooked up to the mains. And this one just gives us some information about our batteries. So how much solar energy are we generating at the moment? How much power is left in our batteries? So they're nice and full at the moment. And then how much energy are we actually using at any given time? Everything's turned off for now, so we're not using any power. And then this is where we usually have dinner, particularly when we're on that colder autumn trip that we did. Just pull out table, just slides out nicely, really secure, so we have no issues in terms of putting kind of weight on it, wouldn't sit on it, but yeah, nice table. We actually bought this, it was like a ready-made kind of shelf from Ikea. Um, so we just cut it down at the front, make it fit for size, and then put a little door front on and it just slides in. So when we bought this van, it didn't have any windows. Obviously, we wanted some living in here full time. So we actually added five windows to this van and I will take you through them all now. So the first ones we added were on the sides. So we have these huge windows either side and I will show you around the other side and show you how we actually can open both of these windows on either side. Around the back, 
We added two back windows, as you can see on the back of the door here. So it lets in lots of light from the back of the van as well. If you come round, I'll show you how we open these two big ones. So from the inside, there's a little mechanism here, which you push down and pull. And it opens to two places, this place or further along here. So you get a nice bit of natural light coming through there. And then we have a smaller window by our feet in the bed, which I'll open for you now. Which is really nice to look out in the morning if you've got a wonderful view. It also lets in a really nice breeze to keep us cool in all those hot countries. In this area, we've got the Max Air fan and our carbon monoxide detector. So this is really important. We're having gas fitted. Things can sometimes go wrong. And if that were to turn into carbon monoxide, then we'd have a problem. So we're set up with an alarm, which is great. And the Max Air fan in 21, this is the most powerful fan that you can buy for the van. And that combines with our roof light, which we have bug net blinds, or we have a complete blackout blinds. And it's really easy. You just pop this and it slides open. But when the fan is running and the roof light is open, you get a really nice breeze, even if all the windows are closed. And if not, if the roof light's staying closed, the fan is great when you're cooking, just takes all of the steam out. Really important part of the van, just to keep the airflow going so that there's not a buildup of mold and condensation. Speaking of condensation, just a quick point around the insulation that we have in the van. So behind the tongue and groove, every single part of metal that was exposed is lined with basically this kind of rubber stick on black material and then on top of that is your more traditional insulation that you would think about the fluffy stuff that's in your roof that's all itchy we've actually got a type of that that is made out of recycled plastic bottles so it's not itchy at all really easy to fit and it is perfect for keeping the van well insulated so that the temperature stays well cool i suppose <laughs> So that brings us on to some of our storage. So underneath our bed, we have a huge area for storage. So I'm just gonna show you that now. We've got all of this space back here and over to the right to store all of our clothes, any outside furniture we might have, our projector, which we'll get onto later. And of course, we have our fire extinguisher here, which is super important for safety. And whilst we're down here, here is the switch for our water pump. So you just switch that on and you can actually hear it running. So that is what we switch on to get some water to our sink. We're just gonna quickly run you through all of the switches and all of the sockets that we have in the van. So starting with the light switch that we have here. This is a dimmable light switch. You just tap whichever part of this circle that you want, how bright you want your lights to be. This socket that we have here, so this is running on 230 slash 240 volt. This is what we use when we have our inverter turned on or when we are plugged into the mains. This is a 12 volt socket, so just a USB socket. This can run at any time, not when the inverter's on. And this one is your traditional lighter switch. So we have a 230 slash 240 volt socket here. We have another 12 volt USB socket built into this chair face. And then we have, this one is 230 slash 240, USB and USC plug-in. So that's most probably the one that we use the most, I would say, because it's convenient and it's right near the bed. So we can plug in our phones. If you open this up, we have another light switch, which is for the lights underneath the hanging cabinets. This hanging unit is two layered so that all the wires are kind of running in between dimmable and lastly we have these two lights which are just battery powered so we've got these kind of stick on lights inside um, and we have a little remote which can turn those on and they can do all funny colors and different brightness so they're pretty cool so something we think is really important to have in a van of course is a home cinema so we have this pretty cool projector screen which is freestanding so we've added these little hooks just hook up here 
And then we have our projector from View Sonic that we use, portable projector, and that just transmits anything from our phone, so we can have Netflix on here. One downside of the Mercedes Sprinter is the curvature. Although we said we bought it because we love the curvature, it does make the build slightly harder. So the van is curving front to back, left to right, the floor is curved, but it does mean that we managed to get some pretty nice finishes on these curved pieces of wood. Um, my granddad did most of the hard work on these. He's a carpenter, so he's, he's good at what he does. We think they add a really, really nice finish. And you may have noticed some Velcro that we've got running around the trim of this door. We have a huge mosquito net that just sticks onto this Velcro. Um, so when we are in places where there are hundreds of bugs, which there are a lot of places like that in Europe, we just stick that up and we have no issues. We just keep the windows closed um, and it's all good. So I just wanted to talk to you about the floor that we have in our van. So the idea was that we would have had real wood here, but of course, keeping the weight down, that just was not an option. So we went for a laminate in the herringbone style, so very trendy two years ago. Um, so that's what we've got here. We're really, really pleased with it. Of course, we also have a gold trim that sits around the edge here to finish it off and make sure that we don't ever trip up here. So here, as I mentioned earlier, is our 120 litre water tank. This was a nightmare to put in because it's so big and you can see the straps on it here. So they basically hook round two of those and then there's some bolts underneath the flooring, which keeps that in place. And we added such a big water tank just so there's enough water that if you want to take this off grid for like a week, you will just have enough water to live off. That brings us on to the most important feature in this van, which is our bed here. So this is designed so we can either sleep widthways or lengthways, which Lewis will show you in a moment. It's super comfy and a really, really huge size. It's a little bit too small for me to be able to lay with my legs completely stretched. I can put my feet in the window gap. But because we have this headboard, it does mean it's a little bit cramped, so I'll have to kind of sit, lay this way, which was a little bit uncomfortable at times, so that's why we've added this cool mechanism at the back, which means we can sleep lengthways. So this is the ledge that we built to stop the pillow from falling down this gap when we put it on the back to sleep lengthways, and it doubles up as a really nice shelf when we eat out the back. So we bought this big pillow. The pillow sits perfectly in here, doesn't fall back. We have a lovely memory foam mattress by Silent Night, by the way, which is super comfy and I never want to get out of the bed. There we have it, so I can sleep fully lengthways now. Feet are still on the mattress and it's proper comfy. So it's perfect really. So long people and short people, you can sleep whichever way you want, no problems. I just mentioned this a minute ago and that is our headboard here at the back of our bed. We really wanted this to be a feature in our van and if you watch our TikTok or our shorts you'll see how I made this, well how we made this by hand from scratch. So that brings us on to the back of our van. So we really wanted the back of this van to be a feature just like everything else in our van. These doors are made out of a quarter inch ply so they're super light which is really important and we just have a little hinge here and then we can open this up. We use this space again for clothes storage. We have two of these, one goes here, one goes here and they just pull out really easily and we keep all of our clothes in there. A great feature and maybe my favourite feature of our van is our pull-out outside table. A really long outside table. I can move these doors back. Won't do it on that side right now, but then we put our seats out here and we have a huge dining space at the back for when we have those sunny nights. This table has no legs and doesn't need any. With the railings that we have on either side of here, it allows us to put up to 200 kilos of weight on here, no problem. On to the really fun stuff in the van, the gas and the electric. So these are mostly the biggest headache when it comes to design because there's loads of rules and requirements that you have to have in place to fit all this. Here is our gas locker. So this is fully metal and a really good safety feature so if our gas tank were to be leaking for any reason the gas would stay in the locker and then the vents that I spoke about earlier that 
go through the bottom of the van and out the bottom, there's a tube, any gas will just go through there. We have this huge LPG bottle. So we have two levers on the side. One will send the gas to the front of the van to occupy the oven and the hob. And the other will send the gas through to the shower when we went to want to have a hot shower. And we've only ever filled that tank up once. So we most probably overdid it in terms of the size of the tank. Here's our water pump. So the thing that I told you that we switch on underneath the bed, this connects to our shower. We're gonna show you how the shower works in a minute. Now, if we wanna fill the gas up, this little nozzle here just pops out and you basically take it to a, like a petrol station where they have LPG. The electrics. So on the roof, we have three solar panels, um, which I believe are 160 watts each. So we're generating 480 watts worth of energy from our solar panels and we have two 230 amp hour batteries, AGM batteries. They're pretty heavy, um, but they store a huge amount of power for us. The thing at the back that you can see, the gray thing, with the green flashing light, that's our MPT controller. So that basically takes the energy from our solar panels and converts that into usable energy on the batteries. The little blue box at the back there that is our DC DC charger. So that will charge the batteries when the engine is running. This big blue one here is our inverter. So this enables us to use 230 um, volt appliances when we're using just the batteries and not hooked up to the mains. This silver one is most probably one of our favorite electrical pieces. That means that if our batteries are running a bit low, we can plug into the mains and that silver thing will charge these batteries back to 100% in a matter of like 20 seconds. And lastly, everything stored here enables us to switch between 12 volt inverter or main. So if we're hooking up, we just switch this and then we're just running off the mains power using 230 volt. Around this side, we have our hookup. So when we're at campsites, we just plug in there and all the electricity is working as it would in your home. Yeah, so that took hours to work out how to do this design and we fitted it all ourselves. Change of plan, I'm showing you the shower. Uh, so, it's our shower unit, a camp that runs off gas, some bolts on there, and it clips on. This is a vent, so this will let off kind of excess gas. This one is our water supply, and then we have two showers two shower heads I should say. Nice big shower. We have one just for when you want to kind of brush your feet off. And they're super easy, you just pull that back, clips onto there and that's it. Job done. Piece of decking so that if we're having to shower somewhere where it's pretty muddy our feet can stay clean and we can just towel them off. You're most probably thinking if we're going to shower here there's going to be water all over the bed. It's not the case, we have a shower curtain that clips onto our normal curtain rail. These, which we attach a pole, and have another shower curtain for privacy if we need it. Water won't go in, and privacy here if we want it, or if we want to be nudists, then we don't put the one on the back. So as well as being able to have space outside at the back of our van, we also have quite a large awning, which is the fuel on the mister. And I won't bore you, but as you can see, it's relatively large. It gives us like a whole other room on the side of our van. We've got shelter from the rain and also some shade from the sun. So a real added bonus of this van is that it's a high security vehicle. So we have this extra locking system, which basically means that the front part of the vehicle in the cabin has to be locked for us to access the back. And you have this little fob and that allows you to open. And you just close the van and it locks itself. So we've already done two big trips in this van. In 2021, we did roughly 10 weeks and we drove all the way to the south of Italy. And then this year we spent another 10 weeks and we drove in total 4,000 miles. We went all the way down to Greece, through Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, and we got the ferry back over to Italy and drove all the way back to England through Italy and France. And touch wood, nothing went wrong. So we're really, really happy with that. 
So guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, the big budget reveal. I'm gonna do a breakdown of all the different areas and how much we spent, and then we will tell you what we got for free. We bought the van for 11,000 pounds, and we needed to get a few little things fixed. So we spent 1,175 pounds on those. Those are things such as the starter motor um, was coming to the end of its life, we wanted to get the brake pads and everything all changed anyway. All in all, think of the initial purchase price as, say, 12175 Bought our fan and our sunroof for £700, our windows for £570, and our solar and electrics were probably one of the most expensive parts of our van, and that came in at just over £2,000 don't necessarily need all of those things if you want to kind of get started. If you want to save on weight, and when I mean save on weight, if we were to swap those batteries out and get lithium batteries, we'd most probably be saving nearly 100 kilos, but they do come at a crazy cost and they would have, the whole system then would have been about five to six thousand pounds. That then brings us on to our insulation. We spent 630 pounds on insulation, which sounds crazy, but we did go top end. But on our wood, we spent a grand total of £800, which might seem like a lot, but obviously we made a lot of this ourselves, so a lot of wood was needed. And then on our appliances, we spent just shy of £700. And the water system was £370, so that includes the two tanks, all of the pipes. We spent £230 taxing the van uh, for the year that we built it. Obviously, that's an ongoing cost. We then spent £700 on our awning, but honestly, we love it so much. And we did get 30% off of the awning. We paid £530 for our oven and our fork. £400 for the gas bottle and the locker. You could definitely do that cheaper. We spent £200 building our outside table. The main cost of that was just on the runners. I think they were £140. And then there's £3,867 on stuff that we just spent along the way. Um, bits of glue, odd bits and pieces, all of that really does add up. That brings the grand total to... 24,300 pounds. Along that journey, we did a few collaborations with some companies. We did get some things for free or discounted. We got our sink and our tap for free. We got our kettle for free. We got our bedding. Um, so we got the actual bedding for free from a company called Otty. Um, the bed linen for free from Piglet in bed. Final thing was all of the gold sockets that you saw. Um, so they're from Corsten. Final thing was our actual projector from ViewSonic. That is everything in terms of cost. Total amount, 24,000. If we hadn't been gifted all of those items and got a few discounts, we would have most probably spent between 26 and 27,000, which is, I would say, a great result for a van that has now done less than 80,000 miles. It's top end, when you close the doors, it feels like an Airbnb. We absolutely love it. Thank you so much for tuning into our YouTube today. If you like what we've done here, make sure you check out our shorts, which show the whole process of how we built this van. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe so others can find us. We'll see you in the next one. You may have noticed that you can buy our ebook. Our ebook shows you how to build a van conversion. It has 190 pages of text, diagram, and images showing you various options or various systems. It also comes with 25 videos that show you hands on how to do many parts of building a van. Also, we have a course. The course is really in depth. It shows you everything from how to use basic tools all the way through to doing your gas, your water, and your electric installation. Not only that, but within the course, we support you hands on in making your electrical specification. And you get to join a community of like-minded van builders who are building their vans at exactly the same time. Follow the links to find out more and thanks for watching.